From the Huntington Bank Studio, this is Colts 360. I see all the things, you know, people say about, you know, there's, you know, pumping up the crowd and stuff. You know, only dumb is quick. You know, I'm not, I'm not a quitter. That's not what I do. I fight to the finish, you know. I'm trying to get this team going. We're trying to make a play. Yes, we're down. We've been down for time, plenty, plenty of times. But guess what? You keep fighting. You know, when you in these situations, you find out what type of team you have. You know, who's quitting on you? Who's going to keep playing? That, that's, 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 that's what we got to do. That's, that's, I mean, that's what I try to do today. I mean, that's why, you know, I feel like the defense came out in the second half, you know, it was more so like, okay, are we going to lay down? Or are we going to step up? Welcome to this week's Colts 360. And you heard it right there from Darius Leonard after the loss to Tennessee. Coach Reich, in those situations, he said, you find out what type of team you have. Hearing that from one of your leaders, one of your captain, how much does that resonate with your team going into the final month of the season? I love it. And, and what's even more important, Lara, is that those aren't empty words from Darius. I mean, you just watch, just watch him play, watch the way he leads. He's not the only one, but he's certainly one of the key leaders. And, you know, even as bad as things got yesterday, you know, at halftime, uh, you know, the way our defense came out in the second half and really in, in some ways, you know, even though we didn't play great in the second half as a team, we, we still did keep our streak alive of outscoring our opponent in the second half. And that might be the one positive take from that game that we were able to, uh, you know, outscore a, a good opponent in the second half. Another encouraging element was certainly T.Y. Hilton. He led the team in receiving, had that first touchdown of the season. How encouraging was that performance? It was very vintage T.Y., especially making that catch in the end zone as he did. Yeah, I mean, it, I was happy. You know, that's probably another positive. I mean, you know, just get T.Y. going a little bit, get it. We got two things in that game from T.Y. You know, we got the deep ball, which, you know, we love to get to him. And then we, we get him in the end zone. So uh, we got to continue to build off that and and uh, really continue to get T.Y. involved. Obviously, we know it'll be a big week, you know, this week going to Houston, um, you know, a place where he loves to play and, and make sure that he's a significant part of the game plan. Battling with some injuries on your offensive line, and that provided Danny Pinter his first opportunity to start at center in place of Ryan Kelly, in particular for a rookie to start at that position, such a significant position. How beneficial was it for him to get that opportunity, not just with his teammates there on the line, but to learn from a veteran quarterback like Phillip? Yeah, I mean, Danny really handled himself well. Um, I think it helped, you know, having Quentin and Globe beside him. You know, having Phillip taking the snaps from him, having Ryan, having his Ryan Kelly having his back all week talking to him about, you know, the calls and the plan. And um, but when it all was said and done, you know, Danny's the one that had to go in there and make it all work, and, and he did a good job. Jacoby Brissett, just the fourth quarterback in the league to rush for two touchdowns or more in a single game. When you and Nick Sirianni started thinking about this game plan of the package you would have this season for Jacoby Brissett. Is the type of productivity he's provided the last three weeks what you envisioned for your offense? Yeah, I mean, it, yes, it is, Lara. I mean, it's early, obviously. It's only been a couple games and, you know, it'll get harder and harder because teams will, you know, they'll try to figure out what we're doing. And that's why we, we have to continue to try to stay one step ahead. And, you know, fortunately with Jacoby, that's easy because you know, he was our starter last year. So it's not like we're only going to do specialty type things, you know, with him, quarterback runs or, you know, the whole offense is open to us. So um, we'll continue to think that through and be very judicious about how we how we plan that out. And uh, but, you know, Jacoby does a great job with it. Injuries are always to be expected. It's certainly part of the game, part of each and every season. But how challenging is just how fluid this COVID situation is with the variants, this great variance when it's symptomatic versus asymptomatic, it's a positive test versus a close contact. And then doing the math on whether it's a number of days or a number of tests you have to be negative in order to know exactly who you have available for Sunday. Yeah, no, it's challenging, but it's the same for all 32 teams. And, um, and really it's about your mindset as an individual and as a team and as an organization. And, you know, we've said this a lot, but our organization has done, I think, a phenomenal job, you know, with adhering to the protocols, trying to minimize everything. But at the end of the day, Lara, it's still a virus. You can't, you can't totally control it. So, you know, we just have to be on top of it and, you know, and then just, you know, be able to adapt and adjust. And our players have done a good job of that. 
Houston, a team that has certainly dealt with share of adversity, especially to start the season. They lost DeAndre Hopkins and the firing of Bill O'Brien, and they appear to be now a team that is finding its identity and hitting its stride, posting back-to-back -back wins on the heels of Deshaun Watson and certainly what you're familiar with in his capability, his talent, and his ability to put a team on his back. With the familiarity you have, you're certainly going to draw upon that, but what are the other things that you emphasize when you're facing a team that's on a bit of a hot streak going in to play at their place, having won three out of their last five, four games? Yeah, you're right. They've won three out of the last four. They've been scoring a lot of points. They've scored 27 or more in five of their last seven. You know, have that elite quarterback. So really our focus is, you know, not so much this is a hot team. You know we respect this team. I mean, this is a team in our division. We, we know how good this team is. So. This really comes down to, you know, what we do and how we do it. So, and what that means is it starts with what we do and how we do it in practice and how we do it in meetings, you know, to get ready to have play our best game of the year this week. On a different note, earlier in the week, your punter, Rigo Sanchez, revealed that he'd have surgery to, re to remove a cancerous tumor. Certainly we know football matters. It's all something that we love very much, have a great passion for. It's why we're all sitting here on this conversation, doing this show, and we're all getting fired up for Sunday. But how much does that situation and this battle that Rigo is going through just put in perspective that it is truly the people that are what's most important? Yeah, I mean, it really puts it into perspective in a hurry. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, to work for an organization, you know, like the Colts and the Ursay family who where family's a priority and those aren't just words. I mean, when something like this happens, I mean, it's first and foremost about the person. And Rigo is the best of people, right? Everybody knows that. Uh, Well-liked and respected. And, uh, you know, we're just, we're thankful that the doctors caught this thing early and uh, we're very optimistic. Uh, you know, we're very optimistic about the prognosis. But uh, so, and, and, but all of our thoughts and prayers are with Rigo and, you know, we're, we were obviously hoping for the best as far as a speedy recovery and, and, and back to being out there with us on the football field. Certainly keeping Rigo and his wife, Cynthia, in our prayers. We look forward to some updates on his progress through that. Coach, always appreciate the time. Good luck. Have a safe trip to Houston. Thanks, Lara. The Maniac is on the mic. Darius Leonard on a pivotal stretch of the season and his campaign to see another Colt as Defensive Rookie of the Year next on Colts 360. All season long, if any Colts running back scores a touchdown, you win a free small curly fry the next day at participating Indianapolis Arby's locations. Not valid with other offers? Visit Colts.com slash promotions for more details. Back now on Colt 360, the one, the only maniac, Darius Leonard joins us now. And Darius, after the loss to Tennessee, you had some strong words for your teammates. You said, you know, I'm not a quitter. We aren't a team of quitters. And this is a point in time. This is a situation when you really feel like you can find out the type of team that you have. What has the response been like from those words this week from your team? Um, you know, everybody just, you know, we, we talk to finish. You know, we fight through everything, you know, especially me. You know, I've been, I've been doubted. I've been, you know, people saying I couldn't do anything. And, you know, I'm always just, you know, trying to go out and prove that, you know, I belong. And no matter what it is, you know, I'm going to fight through the finish. You know, there's a lot of people who like who love to quit when they get down, you know. But, you know, I've, I've been fighting for everything since I've been, you know, since I've been younger. So, you know, just trying to keep that same mentality no matter what. And just trying to tell my teammates, you know, I don't care what the score is. And as long as they got time on the clock, man, we can find a way to get a win. And that's the mindset that you got to have if, if you're winning or if you're down. Do you draw upon previous experiences with these guys that you can use to say, hey, we've come out tougher from bigger challenges than this? Um, I, I think about the Cincinnati game. You know, the Cincinnati game, we was down early. And then, you know, I go back to the Green Bay game. You know, we're down. And, you know, just because you're down, it doesn't mean you can't get back up and keep fighting. That's, that's the main thing. You know, it's not about you getting knocked down. It's about you, how do you respond when you get back to your feet? And that's, that's the mindset, because, I mean, Everybody get knocked down, but you gotta, you gotta get up, you gotta keep fighting no matter what. And that's the mindset, you know, that you know I tell them, and I, I use that example with Green Day, and you know, that's something I really stay true to. It is always tough to be down a single starter. We know what your teammates said about having uh, having to play without you in those few games that you had to miss, and the difference that it makes not having you on the field. 
When you're down three starters with DeForest, Danico, and Bobby all out in that game against Tennessee, where do you feel their impact, that loss, the most on this defense? Um, you know, just, um, I say the energy, you know, just, you know, that that dominant force, you know, divorce, the force is, you know, he's a monster, you know, you know who he is, you know, he's an all-pro. Then you got Demico, you know, he's, you know, great defensive end, you know, he's been making plays, been playing well. You know, Bobby's been doing great in the pass game, in the run game, so you just missed them elements, but, you know, you just, it's the next man, next man up mentality. You know, you got to, you got to prepare as you're going to be the starter, no matter what, you got to do your job, you know, so even if them guys was there, they still have to do their job and, that's the mindset that you're supposed to have, you know, even though that you're missing them guys, you still got to do your job. You got to find a way to get the job done, no matter what. We asked Coach Reich last week about your essentially single-handedly starting the campaign to try to get Julian Blackman as defensive rookie of the year. What have you seen from Julian? And one of the things um, also that Coach Reich said is if he's ever campaigning for anything, he's going to put you in charge because of the juice that you're going to put into the campaign. And you are the guy that you want promoting you, whatever it is. With Julian, what have you been, what have you been most impressed with with him? Man, just him making plays. He, he's not playing like a rookie. You know, and you see all his big takeaways come in in the clutch. And that's what it's all about. I mean, every, everybody can make tackles, you know, everybody can do this, but when the game is on the line, who is really stepping up? That's what makes you a great player. Like, people don't understand that. Yes, I mean, people say, yeah, you, you got interceptions here early in the game, but when it's, you know, it's time for, it's, the score is tied up, it's overtime. Who can step up? Who can make a play? And that's, it reminds me of somewhat about, my, about myself, my rookie year. You know, I had a lot of big time, you know, stops or big time plays in, in um, at the end of the game, and so now he's doing the same exact thing, and there's nobody else out there doing that. And I feel like he de he deserved his respect, and he deserved to be defense rookie of the year as long as he continue to improve in his game and improve to make continue to make plays. I definitely don't see anyone above him being defense rookie of the year. You can put the stats up. And you're going to need all your playmakers this Sunday against Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. Deshaun has really put this team on his shoulders, carried them to wins in three of their last four games. What's the biggest challenge when you face a quarterback like Deshaun who has that ability that he does? Oh, for one, you got to stop the run. You know, you got to stop the run because if you they're running the ball, you know, the whole playbook is open. But if you if you stop the run and make, make a team one-dimensional and – then, you know, Deshaun, he's he's incredible when he got the ball in his hand. So that's when he's going to be four four versus one, you know, in the in the rush lanes. And then, you know, you got to make sure you keep him in the well, make sure he don't leave out the pocket because he make his a lot of his big plays whenever he leave the pocket. So you got to make sure you keep him in the in the pocket. You know, all all guys keep your eyes on him. And then whenever he does leave the pocket, the DB's got to make sure that you plastering the guys because now that turns the backyard football. You know, that's, you know, we all grew up playing backyard football and there's no, there's no routes when he's out of the pocket. Now you got to go out. Okay. They're about to run some stuff that you've never seen before. So you just got to make sure you plaster your guys, plaster your eyes and make sure you stay in coverage and just um, have somebody to get, um, get the quarterback down. This week is also one we always look forward to because it is my cause, my cleats. What is the special organization that you're supporting and why did you decide on that one? I'm going with the Lupus Foundation. Um, my little sister been battling the lupus for uh, three years now, and just seeing all the things that she's been through in life, you know, the aches, uh, the, the weight loss, the, um, you know, the hair loss, and just seeing how much she fight and not not giving up. I never seen her quit. I never seen her have a doubt in her mind. And, you know, that's just, with me playing ball, you know, just, I'm so thankful to be out here, you know, to play this game, because knowing that she can't do the things that she used to love anymore. So now that she's not out there complaining, she's not doing anything, so now, I know that I can't, I can't complain no matter what I do. And she's so strong, she's so courageous. And I just want to let her know that, you know, I'm with her no matter what, what it is in life. And I just want to show her that my support and I'm standing behind her. Darius, you're always one of the best. You're always supporting everybody else. We got to make sure that we support you. Get that Pro Bowl voting going. You can do it on social media. Let's get the maniac there into the Pro Bowl. Let's, let's get it. Let's go on and get back there. But hopefully I'm not playing in it, you know, but you know, hopefully I get the vote, but hopefully I won't be playing in it. <laughs> Darius, appreciate you. Have a great game this weekend. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Up next, we always want more of Kenny Moore. That's coming your way as the Colts corner is mic'd up for game day ahead on Colts 360.
He's a fan favorite for his explosive playmaking ability on the field and his dynamic personality off of it. Colts cornerback Kenny Moore takes us in between the lines for that big divisional battle against the Titans. Had to get to where we going. We got to take care of business today. DBU with a slide out three, one, two, three, DBU. Hey. Get you something? That's crazy. You think I'm out here to give you something? I'm not out here to give you anything but a dub. No commentaries, no dialogue. I just play football. <laughs> See what? My brother. What's up? Yes, sir. Woo! That's how I bro. My other brother. What's up, brother? No, bro. All day. Yes, sir. You know what? Shout out to my mama. Shout out to my family. Shout out to the whole city. Oh! Woo! Jack about to sprint out this time, man. He's jogging today. He's jogging. He's jogging. He might speed up. Sometimes he's sprinting in the air. I'll go to the truck. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get kids started. Hey. Oh, yeah, I like it. If I see that one second faster, oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo! Yo, you good? Yeah, you he felt that. On me, on me, I just struck him. On me, I struck him. Keep your eyes open, okay? Come on. Make a play. I'm going over. Told y'all going over. Told y'all going over. Grow up! Grow up! Right now! Come on, I gotta make a play. Here we go, right here. He's gonna throw it right to me. I'm meeting up a tad bit early. The eyes up out of my neighborhood. Keep going, yo. We talk about you in the meeting, bro. How strong you are, bro. Get that stuff. Oh, yeah? yeah? Hey, that's love, bro. Keep going, yo. Thanks, bro. You know what's healthy, dog? Yes, sir, you too. Love my dog. Love y'all boys, man. Love I hate you. Up. Yeah, stay healthy. Yes, sir. The Colts special teams unit has prided itself all season long on making game-changing plays like we saw in that first meeting with the Tennessee Titans on Thursday night down in Nashville. Now, in our latest director's cut, EJ Speed and TJ Carey break down that blocked punt touchdown that swung momentum fully in the Colts' favor. We got so many playmakers that if you slip up, we won't make the play. Every time you go out there, if you're like, man, we can make a difference, let's do it. And when the plays came, we made them. Come on, y'all. Made plays now. We knew that this game was going to come down to whoever made the least amount of mistakes. Bubba and Frankie, they always put together some great rushes. We said, hey, if we get in positions in the game and we need something to happen, we're going to start pressuring them. Here in the third quarter, and Tennessee leads 17 to 13. I know if I can get my hand in a, in a punter vision, anything can affect them. I didn't think the PP was going to come out that late, so I thought I was going to get the full block on this one. And I still got a chance to affect the play. He shanked it. Absolute shank job. Wow. So after that play, we were just licking our chops. When we seen that he was rattled after this one, hey, we're coming hard next time. Let's go. Now it's fourth down, and Tennessee will punt it back to the Colts. It was definitely a call block. They're a little rattled. So the more we false communicate, move around, shift around, gives them a level of uncertainty that we kind of sensed earlier. That tackle, he was supposed to be blocking out, but Zaire had so much pressure on him all game. He was kind of so fixated on his battle with Zaire that he lost track. I seen the tackle went down, I was like, it's got free. Tavon jumped the snap so crazy and he hit the PP. So the PP had no chance to block any leakage on the block returns. And that slight adjustment of us doing those things just gives us enough confusion from their side to really capitalize on making this play. Oops. Should get good field position out of this one. They block it. The Colts block it. It's picked up by the Colts. And that's TJ Carey. Special teams. How about you? I launched with my hands first to get to the contact, but I kind of over-launched on it. I thought it hit my chest. But, I mean, it hit my, it hit my helmet. 
And I kind of felt it like after the play. <laughs> wow, this it's an open ball in the open field. My eyes is so focused on the end zone, I almost dropped the ball. I had to come back to it and say, oh, whoa, whoa, we ain't got the ball yet. And then I seen TJ running to the end zone with it and I just chased to celebrate. Your brother makes the play and you are able to capitalize on what he did. Us being able to score on this unit, it was such an impactive momentum switch that um, you need those in these big games. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y! I was going so crazy that I don't even remember like us being in a mix and taking the pictures. Our individual celebration is a group celebration. Sometimes the, the person that makes the play, he might miss the celebration in a sense because everybody's already moving forward toward that camera. See, look, I'm in the back. I'm thinking my dogs, I'm thinking they turned with me. Taylor came and celebrated with me, but I'm thinking everybody like looking my way. It was so many cameras out there that I thought everybody would turn my way, but I missed it. That's my fault right there. <laughs> <laughs> George, yeah, I should have been in that picture for sure. They block it, a block punch for a touchdown! Special teams, how about ya? From all of us at Colts Productions, thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. And as we wrap up this week's show, we want to send our thoughts and prayers to Rigo through his cancer battle. Rigo, we are with you, and we cannot wait to see you back out on the field with your teammates.